Hey guys, Taki Cat here, and I want to do a few things, uh, and then we're gonna get into like a Twitter Q and A. But first, I'm gonna do a betrayal private league reset starting Saturday, the second of February. It's gonna start the same time that Bay Class normally starts, and like Bay Class, I will start streaming an hour before. So if you want to be there for the exact like boom on the clock uh, league start, make sure in the stream tomorrow. Um, I can't link the startup page before, sadly, because we have no way of setting, like, a time and date for it. But, yeah, it's going to be a complete league restart. It's going to be softcore trade uh, will be enabled. The way that trade works, uh, we use global 8008. Um, so people will talk there if they want certain things. But also, if you set your stash tabs to public, the official Path of Exile trade API works. So you can use the official Path of Exile trade website. And we do also use some of the global and trade channels. And it will be softcore trade, keeping 20% haste, no other mods. If you're like, oh, 20% haste, that sounds terrible. 20% haste makes phases faster. So if you think about a boss which has um, 10 seconds of immunity, with this thing, they have 8 seconds of immunity. It genuinely makes the game a lot more fun. If you're curious what builds I'm going to be League starting on, my goal for this, and for the record, it will last from the 2nd of Feb through till the 2nd of March. It will basically run till the end of Betrayal and finish just before the new League starts. Um, me and Kane are going for the goals of Duo, Uber Elder, and Uber at Zero kills with slightly off meta picks. Um, so we're going to plan that stuff out, but expect me to do like the Tarki D-Gen special. And one of us will do like a supporty-ish kind of character. And yeah, that's really cool. And I'm really looking forward to it. But let's get into the Twitter Q&A. Now, I do these Twitter Q&As about once a month or so. And if you're not already, make sure you follow me on the Twitter. And uh, we've collected a few questions from Twitter. And also probably take a few questions from chat as well. And apparently Derek's going to be a Berserker League start. So if you want to be part of the Berserker gang, then feel free. Free. But anyway, let's just sort of get into it. So, time for the YouTube peeps to get some source. I'll make a video responding to the best comments and questions on this tweet in 48 hours. Unpopular opinions, PB thoughts, other games, IRL MTX, music stuff, the length of R underscore underscore ZQT's PP. No idea who that is. Ask away. Please no. Brexit. So, first question. Which isn't a question, it's just a statement. You may have the most photogenic cat ever. I agree. Bob's is special, and not only that, I definitely have the best cat Twitter game in the PB section. So, as clap. Childhood thoughts. Any best slash worst childhood happenings, memories, or something like that? Wanna hear stories? I actually have a few, like, really obscure memories, and... You, anything you have with childhood stuff, you never, you can always have to, like, did this actually happen or is this a dream? There are a few memories I have. I don't know if it's a reoccurring dream or something I actually remember. Um, so, yeah, one reoccurring dream, which I'm pretty sure is a reoccurring dream, but might have actually happened as a child, I'm not sure, uh, was when I was, like, 10 or 11. Uh, I vividly, vividly remember randomly sneaking out of bed in the middle of night and starting my mum's car and then freaking out and then turning the engine off and getting back into bed but i've had that dream so many times that i'm like is that a memory or what's that about but it's something which actually did happen um which was slightly mortifying there where my grandmother lives i spend a lot of time staying at my grandmother's house the garden um, backed onto a ditch, which then backed onto a bunch of train tracks. And she'd had a bunch of trees cut down um, in her back garden. She had, like, branches and stuff everywhere. And uh, you need to get rid of the branches. And it's, you know, it's biodegradable, whatever, and there's this ditch. Um, and it's like, oh, I'll just throw it over the fence. or go in the ditch. It's fine. It's whatever. So it's like, all right, cool. And uh, I was just helping tidying up, and then she went off to do whatever she was doing. And I was really young, like, maybe... Maybe like 10 or something. Everything seems to happen around the age of 10. I'm 25 for the record, 26 in February. And um, I threw this one branch and it f went way further than I thought it would. So you know when you just gotta like do something and it's like, oh shit, I threw that like 20 times further than I expected. 
and it went over the fence and I was like, <gasps> did that go on the train tracks? And I kind of like half climbed and stuck my head over the top of this fence, which is like seven, eight feet tall. So I couldn't climb over it, you know, and it was like right on the train tracks and I was freaking the fuck out. And a few days before, I'd seen the Malcolm in the Middle episode where they're trying to get rid of the sofa and the sofa goes on the train tracks. I can't remember exactly how the episode goes, but it's either like a, a train has like an oil spill or something, but everyone ends up in everyone ends up in the gym and there's like toxic waste or something. I don't know if you guys remember that episode. And I was freaking out. I was convinced that like, oh my God, I'm going to like derail this train. And I'm like, ah! and I run up to the top of the house because there was like a really big window you could see and i was looking out the window i'm just like oh my god oh my god oh my god and i could see the branch and i could see that it wasn't even that big of a branch and i could see a train coming and genuinely i thought i was about to cause like you know a thousand deaths or something ridiculous and the train just went over it and it was fine um but i think that's probably like the biggest like oh my fuck relief moment i've ever had in my entire life like I was genuinely shitting bricks. I was really, really freaked out. Um, otherwise, the best childhood happenings. What's a very, what's a very positive story that I remember from being a child? Um, well, you don't really remember the good things. You mostly just remember the complaining things. I went to Legoland and. Uh, I remember being very happy with the, you know, like the sifting for gold. Anyone who's been to Legoland in England, they've got like a, a sand pit and there's like a pirate theme. I can't remember exactly how it works. And you've got like a sieve and you sieve for gold and then you get like a shitty little like toy amulet or something. I thought it was legit, man. I, I, I remember being very proud, like very proud of like, yeah, I found this shit. Um, so yeah, that's probably, probably... Maybe best, I don't know, but definitely like something I, I vividly remember sitting for gold in Legoland. I think I also got a uh, Millennium Falcon like Lego kit as well. That might have been the same year actually. I was really into Lego as a kid. I really enjoyed. I remember building this car once, and uh, I was really proud of it because I didn't build it following a guide. I just like freehand built this car, and I'm like, that is a sick car. And then. I wanted to make something else, and I didn't have that many Lego parts, so I then took the car apart. And then I tried to put the car back together, and I couldn't do it, and I was really upset. So I was like, it was so awesome. And like I showed it to my mum, and she's like, oh, that's cool. And then I like went to school, I was like, oh, I made this sick car, and like, oh, let's see it then. And I'm like, well, I took it apart, and they're like, oh, bullshit. And I, I was like, yeah. Um, yeah. Favourite board game, if any? Um, Settlers of Catan is really good. I really enjoy Settlers of Catan, and I also really enjoy Risk. Um, really, really enjoy Settlers of Catan. A lot of the, so if you haven't played it, I haven't played it in years actually. Basically, the way it works is there's different islands, I think it is, and you have to try and build up your economies, and there are different resources. I think it's like wood, something like copper, maybe clay. It was like lumber, clay, copper, maybe hay or something. And it's, you, it's like, oh, you want to build um, this, then you need the wheat. That was it. And then, it's, you know, you had to, it's all about trading certain research, resources, stone. It's like, so one uh, island might have loads of stone, but another island has lots of wheat. So you're competing with um, your enemies, but at the same time, you have to trade with them. So it's a bit like, it's like a more advanced risk. So it's like if you enjoyed risk where it's like you're trying to do the whole world domination thing, you know, risk was a lot of kind of like, oh, I'm going to attack this, attack that. And you kind of, you know, team up with each other or whatever. But with Settlers of Catan, there's that whole aspect because you have to trade. It makes it a lot more interesting. Um, and because of that, it, it very rarely makes the game completely one sided. Like if someone's. Like, if, you know, if you've ever done that thing where, like, you're playing Monopoly with your family and one guy just, like, buys all the best shit and it's really obvious they're going to win? It's just, it feels played out and you kind of just want to quit halfway through. Whereas with Settlers of Catan, it's one of those things of one guy might be absolutely crushing it, but you might have all the wood and you're just like, you want to keep building your shit? Well, you've got to trade with me, bitch. 
So we got to work this out. Otherwise, you can't do what you want to do. And that's what I really like in board games. Games where it's like not just one guy just wins. Because so many board games are like, hey, you want to play this game? It's going to have like, it's going to last like three or four hours or something absolutely ridiculous. And, you know, 30 minutes in, you instantly know who's going to win. That really sucks. Um, but yeah, I remember I used to, I had a friend called David from school. And I used to go around to his house a lot. And his parents were one of those parents who limited the game time. If you're one of those parents. Oh my. So he had a GameCube. And he was only allowed an hour of GameCube every night. And genuinely, there was like a, a, there was like a timer. And they would flip it. So when he turned on, they would flip it. And like he had to only play for that. And we used to play Smash. And he was really good at Smash. Now... Sure, David was like really good at school and used to get amazing grades. So maybe the fact that he could only play an hour of Smash every night, maybe that meant he used to spend more time learning shit. But it was annoying being his friend because it's like, yo, David, like, I get you're getting the good grades, but you know, I'm just getting average grades. So why can't I, why can't I play more Smash? So what would happen is like we'd go over, we, we used to get like crazy homework every day um, after school and I used to go around there quite a lot. So we'd go around after school, do our homework, we'd get to play Smash for like an hour or something, maybe we'd eat some dinner, and then I'd have like another hour or two to kill until I went back home with my mum. So then it'd be like, we'd, just, we'd end up just playing like Monopoly a lot. Um, and it would be like one-on-one -on -one Monopoly, right? So, especially with games like that where it's just like 1v1, a lot of these games need like four or five people to like feel good. Um, it'd be like, yo... We, we know how this is ending, bro, like... <laughs> so yeah, I used, to, I used to spend a lot of time playing board games, actually, as like a teenager and stuff. And this this friend, like, this was... This was secondary school, so that's like ages 11 to 16 or something. So like, 14-year-old me, when I used to go to his house, it was like, yo... I want to play like, wow, I want to play RuneScape and shit, but instead it's like an hour of Smash and then 1v1 Monopoly for like two hours. It was pretty cringe. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot more of those kind of games that I would like to get into, but they require having certain, um, certain group sizes. It's like a lot of my viewers actually do a lot of D&D &D, and I've always really wanted to get into D&D. &D. The problem is I don't know people who I don't want to get in D&D with. I know quite a few people who play D&D. &D. I remember at uni there was like a D&D &D group. But you just didn't want to fucking play D&D &D with them because they were idiots. It's like if I was doing it I imagine I'd get really into being the dungeon master. And coming up with narratives and stories and like drawing out maps and setting puzzles and all of this stuff. Um, and I actually, uh, read quite a few, like, blogs from people who, who are dungeon masters. It's really interesting, because it's that whole game design thing, you know, about how you set a puzzle, but don't make it too obscure. Because you get a lot of people who want to be dungeon masters, and they have this, like, stupid, like, okay, so now you need to decipher the 27 different languages, and then if you take this blue butterfly that you found... 20 days ago, back to the starting location, three months later, and you speak Welsh backwards while holding a blue hat, then you unlock the fairy sword. And it's like, no, like, what the fuck are you doing? And that's the other thing as well with a lot of games like that, where they have to be played over multiple settings. You need to have it set up in a way that, you know, there are certain plot points people couldn't remember from week to week, or maybe from month to month if you don't get to play that often. Um, but I remember there was this like one D&D group at uni and um, at uni I uh, was studying film, mostly documentary filmmaking. And I remember one of my friends had to make a, he had a, like one of the subjects was, oh, we had to make a documentary about something weird on the like university grounds. Um, and it was my girlfriend at the time. She was, she made a documentary about these guys. So she was just filming all this stuff going on for ages. Um, and then... Obviously, when she finished the film and the editing, I, I, I watched a lot of their campaigns. And, dude, their campaigns were so fucking stupid. Basically, they'd have one guy who's like, yo, I've read some books. I've planned this out. This is what it's going to be. And he would start with this very set thing. He would go way too overly complex. He'd then get pissed off, like, a week in. 
and then he'd go on some weird like neckbeard shit and there'd be ponies in there and giant bunny rabbits and then half the people doing the D&D &D stuff wouldn't take it seriously the other half took it way too seriously and would be like you'd, you'd, like, you'd have the equivalent of one guy like fully dressing up with like elf ears and the other guy who's kind of like texting the whole thing like what? Wait, what happened? Oh, wait, hang on. Wait, what? What's happened? Did you pass the Dorito? And it was like, fuck me, dude. It was really cringe. So basically, I would like to get into D&D. But you need to have, like, a group of people who aren't fucking useless. And that's difficult. Um, but Settlers of Fatan is Pog. I love that game. All right. Thoughts on Sun Kill Moon as a music project and how you can balance Slayer slash Scion Slayer. It seems like the only reason is Overleech and well, just be sound for that. Sun Kill Moon as a music project. I don't think I know what that is. Sun Kill Moon. I probably do. I'm terrible with name. Hang on, let's look this up. Sun Kill Moon. Who is this? American folk rock act from San Francisco, California, founded in 2002. The Needle Drop reviewed one of their albums in November of 2018. I think I've watched this review. Um, my opinion is whatever Antoine Fantoine said about it. Um, hang on, let's see. Did he give it a light to strong seven? Let's just listen to the last 10 seconds track on this entire record. The tried and true country chords of the David Cassidy track are also kind of quaint, but all of this is barely enough to drive me back to this album, honestly. So while I respect Mark Kozlek expanding his storytelling abilities on this album and completely break down the rules of what it means to write, record, and sell a song, musically speaking, I think this album is also one of his less interesting in recent memory. I'm feeling a decent to a strong six on this thing. Tran. Z um, so my thoughts on the Sun Kill uh, Moon music project. I thought it was quite a quaint kind of album. There were some elements I kind of liked about it, but it felt a little bit underdeveloped at times. Like, it wasn't bad, and I definitely enjoyed listening to it. But, you know, it's not something that I could really recommend to people unless I knew they kind of had, like you know, an interest in the kind of, like, American folk. I would say it's probably, like, I don't know. I mean, it's definitely above average. Maybe, like, 6 out of 10. I don't know. Um, how to balance Slayer slash Scion Slayer. So, I think that people kind of sleep on, like, just straight up Slayer Slayer. Slayer Slayer is actually pretty good. So, some of the nice things about Slayer Slayer, um, it's not necessarily that Slayer Slayer is weak. It's the fact that there isn't much reason for it. So the main thing is all of the um, overkill damage leeches life and also the increased uh, life leech per second. And like anything you can do to get the crazy big duration. With Slayer Leech you can like attack and then just be like basically immune to damage you just power heal for like 10 seconds. That's really good if you're running something like Lab. Or if you have bosses with really long immunities. So if they made like a new boss and it had like 10 second immunity phases very regularly. Then Slayer would be stronger than something like Scion Flex that has that longer leech period. Um, the overkill damage leech does life is also very strong for leeching off things which are hard to leech from. So for example if you use something like dual obliteration ones. Those explosions are like Impulsor you can leech that damage through the overkill. So if you're playing a particular kind of spell caster, which is hard to get leech on, Slayer does have some like strong niche in there. Um, another thing which makes it quite bad is the 20% cull. So the 20% cull is amazing, but like Uber Elder, the big scary boss, you can't super cull him. So it's kind of like the current bosses don't suit Slayer as a meta, um, but if they introduce something new and scary that you could... 20% cull where you needed those longer leech periods and you know if reflect ever came back in a way because you also used to remember the reflect kind of disappearing um changed the, the way that a lot of people approach it like if reflect came back in a big way a lot of people would then start taking scion elementalist and then suddenly it's like shit what do i pick because most scion builds are some combination of like pathfinder slayer and then some people do stuff like jug uh sorry if they need accuracy 
Some people go elementalist, some people do sab stuff. You sometimes see people go into like Hierophant. But the main one is just like Slayer Pathfinder, Slayer Pathfinder. So once they start mixing up the meta a little bit, you'll naturally see change. The other thing which makes Scion so dominant is stuff like, you know, uh, Might of the Meek, Unnatural Talent. There's basically just a lot of things which just favor Scion, which don't favor Slayer. Don't favor Slayer. But it's also just the fundamental issue of Scion. The way Scion is designed, it will always be terrible or amazing. Um, because it's like taking the best bits of certain ascendancies. It will always be either strictly worse or strictly better. The only times that it feels good, um, I really like Deadeye. I think Deadeye Scion is amazing. So you get some accuracy, you get two pierce, you get the bleed thing, which is whatever. Uh, you get some damage, which is whatever, but you get the additional projectile. So you get good things. You get the pierce and the extra push. Those are the main things there, right? But Deadeye still has tailwind and that's the thing which i really like so it's like yo do i want to play a dead eye well i want tailwind are you like hmm i'm playing something like essence strain maybe i want the extra project build the pierce well then maybe sound would be better same kind of deal with pathfinder right so sound pathfinder it gets the flask regen but doesn't get the elemental immunity and that's how you should build it so i think the fact that scion does get the whole slayer leech aspect is kind of fucky um, I think it'd be more interesting if Sion got the 20% cull, for example. But anyway, Slayer, Slayer is in a decent place, to be perfectly honest with you. And uh, I think that was all of the questions. We didn't actually get that many questions from Twitter this time. Usually we get like five to eight. I could take maybe one or two questions from chat, but otherwise I'll just kind of round out the video here. Um, so if you, anyone in chat wants to ask me something for the q and I'll take like the top two or whatever. Um, but again, just reminder while chat works out if they've got anything they want to say. Private League will be starting 2 p.m. Saturday, UK time. Anyone is welcome to join. I will have a command in my chat, exclamation league. Once the new league is active, it will link to the sign up page. I'll also have it pinned in my Discord. And if you do exclamation Discord in my chat, you can join my Discord there. And I'm sure I'll also share it on Twitter somewhere as well. There will also be a YouTube video once the new league uh, starts um, saying what my build is, what Kane's build is, and I'll be able to do more like daily style updates. One other thing which is uh, very exciting, giving you the early scoop on, I've been talking with Bex and we have another developer interview planned for Bayclass um, right before the new league start. Now, the new league is being announced on the 14th of February, and I'm going away to Ireland uh, to visit Grill for our birthdays um, from the 18th to the 26th. Um, both our birthdays happen to fall in that. Pisces and Aquarius gang. Uh, usually, we would do uh, the Bay class like the week after the announcement, so it'd be like the 21st, 22nd, but obviously, I'm going to be away for that. So when I get back on the 26th, it will be between the 26th and I believe the 4th of March or March 8th when the new league starts. That's when we'll do the developer interview. Um, it will also be a little bit later than usual, which is kind of good because it means that we'll have more uh, information to really sink our teeth into. So that will be great. Um, but that will all be announced as it comes. Is there any particular change you want to balance for next league? Um, I would still like to see a couple more tweaks to the movement skill meta. I think the movement skill meta is a lot, lot, lot better. But I think they should just keep doing small changes here and there. Just a little bit, you know. As we've seen, slight nerf to shield charge, slight nerf to queen of the forest, slight buff to flame dash. I still feel like lightning warp could get just a little bit more juice. Just a little, little, little bit more oomph. And uh, I think small changes like that would be kind of cool. I'm not expecting anything too massive from the new league. Um, obviously, I'm expecting cool content, but, you know, I'm not expecting crazy stuff. So I'm thinking we're probably going to get more um, reworks around skills. You know how, you know, we had the uh, Chaos Damage Overtime Multiplier, Cold Overtime Multiplier? I think they're going to stick with that, right? So they're going to be like, yo, let's pick Ignite, or let's pick Poison, or let's pick physical i think that's the method they're going with now 
where they're like, this is this one art type, and then we'll rework a couple of old skills. So for skills that I would like to see reworks, Ignite is fine. You can make Ignite work. It does feel a lot harder to scale um, than Chaos Degen and obviously Cold Degen. So I think Ignite could do with some love. Poison could definitely do with some love. I don't know if they would do uh, Degen right after doing Degen then. So I think it's a bit more likely they'd maybe look at some of the pure physical side of things. Um, maybe even looking at uh, some of the ailments, um, like Lightning, for example. Like Lightning, the only reason why Lightning seems good right now is because of Impulsor and Arc. But outside of that, you know, Lightning isn't in the best of spots compared to something like Ignite when Ignite does damage. Um, cold with all the cool stuff you get from freezes and whatever. Um, but yeah. How do you decide which map to Elder Orb? Considering I mostly play SSF or private leagues, it generally depends on is there a particular div card that I want. Um, if you want just gl uh, general trade league advice, there's a really good content creator by the name of Thin, T H I 3 N, um, and he has really good mapping videos. Also, need to make sure that you check out um, uh, Carve and Engineering Eternity's videos. Um, I'm pretty sure Cute Dogs put out some, you know, mapping eldery stuff. Um, people like Grimroy, people like MP. So, if you're playing General Trade League, look to like the MFers. Um, but for me personally, yeah, it's like, yo, do I need to have a particular div card? Am I going for a particular uh, strategy? So, a lot of what I was doing in my last private league. Um, was based around I wanted to farm Uber Elder. So for that, I didn't even Elder Orb because I, the only tier 6 things I wanted to drop were um, Guardians. I didn't want to dilute the Guardian pool by adding in, you know, random other stuff. So, yeah. And on that note, a little bit more at at Atlas tweaking and changing would be nice in the new league. And, uh, yeah. What are the mods for the league? How do we get in? That's all being covered in the start of this video. Uh, TLDR, turn up to my stream tomorrow. Uh, right before it starts, click the command in chat, sign up, and you're good to go. But anyway, I'll round that up here, upload that to YouTube. So I'm Taki, Private League tomorrow, by the way. Have a good day. But wait, there's more. Debate it. Um, there's one thing which I read in chat the other day, which really annoyed me. Um, and it was to do with the IRL MTX. Anyone who watches my clothing stuff knows that. And he was like, hey, you know... Clothes are bullshit. Um, it's all about being skinny or being in good shape. And there's, I have seen this in, from in a few different places where it's like, yeah, well, you know, clothing only matters if you're like, you know, seven foot and ripped as shit, or if you're like really skinny and bullshit. You can just be an average dude with like average features, average weight. You can be overweight. You can look, you can look pretty kind of chill there. So, boom, boom, boom. A couple of days ago. When this guy said the thing in chat, I went on Reddit Streetwear, which is a Reddit I sometimes use, and I just picked out three average dudes wearing average stuff and looking fucking awesome. So, here's one. This guy is absolutely killing it. And that's because he just had a coordinated, put-together outfit. There's nothing that crazy there. And he looks, he looks pog. He looks fucking muy buen, 10 out of 10. You know, fucking hella fuego. Random things. And he's just wearing some cuffed chinos, a jumper, and some fucking kicks, dude. Here's another dude. This guy doesn't even have a face. And this guy looks sick, right? You don't even need a face chat. You just need to think a bit, you know, kind of coordinate your stuff together. And suddenly you're looking, you know. And then the final one, before we finish for the day is a budget Shia LaBeouf, you know? Budget Shia LaBeouf is looking pretty, pretty fucking cozy. It's cold outside. My boy's looking nice. He's looking warm. So yeah, private league tomorrow, by the way. And quit this bullshit, you know, about, oh, there's no point trying. There's no point ever trying because I'm not, you know, mathal. Fuck off, dude. Anyway, I'm Taki. Have a good day. Bye-bye.